Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Macon Bibb County Pre-Commissioning, acting as a committee of the whole. Today is Tuesday, May the 2nd, and the time is now 5 o'clock. We do have our regularly scheduled meeting at 6 o'clock this evening, but we're going to go ahead and begin with our pre-commission meeting. Item 1 is a approval of minutes from April the 18th, 2023. I get a motion for approval. Motion by Commissioner Bronson, second by Commissioner Howell. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. Item two is an appointment to authorities, boards, and commissions. 2A, a resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to appoint Julia Morrison to serve as a member of the Macon Bibb County Bicentennial Committee. And if you don't mind standing up and being recognized, this is Ms. Julia Morrison. I will tell you she'll be taking the place of uh, Mr. Chris Sheridan, who is uh, rolling off of that uh, Bicentennial Committee. And both the chair and co-chairs, or share co-chairs, have asked and requested her to be on there. She's been helping them doing a lot of the marketing for the program, as well as responsible for the Make Mall art and other things there. And uh, that's my recommendation. So at this time, I entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem Cart, second by Commissioner Bronson. Any questions regarding that? You want to ask her a question? Okay. Ms. Morrison, if you don't mind going up there, Elaine likes to punish everybody, so tonight you're the person. Tell why you want to serve Hello. on this fabulous board. As, um, I have been serving on many of the uh, smaller committees that have been contributing to the Bicentennial. So um, I was the project manager of the uh, uh, Make and Mall exhibition that's opened up with over 25 artists and then working on um, a mini film festival, uh, the Al Kamolgi Indigenous Mini Film Festival, which will be coming in the fall. Um, and then have uh, been asked to take charge of the marketing committee as well. So um, I've also been serving on the subcommittee to create some really beautiful um, on African American history and heritage trail, um, which will be really lovely in downtown Macon. I've talked to some of the commissioners about that. <laughs> well, thank you. Any questions for Ms. Morrison? Commissioner Lucas? You, you know you're a success when people can anticipate what you're going to ask, and it's good. <laughs> so. Thank you, Thank you so much. for your willingness to serve. Okay, we do have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries unanimously. We sent to consent agenda. I'm going to move on to alcohol beverage licenses. We have several of those tonight. I will tell you the first one, after the first one, all the rest of them were from the same uh, owner, and we can do those in, in block if you want to. The first one is the Exxon Food Mart located at 2630 Emory Highway, Macon, Georgia. One thing I will tell you about this one, the original recommendation for this particular item was for not to be approved because of our uh, good standing letter. If you recall, we passed a policy a while back that if you owed any taxes, you were not permitted to get a license. Um, this particular owner owed um, $20,241, and we're pleased to announce that they paid that today. So now Mr. Howard has recommended that the license be approved. That was the only thing holding it up. So this time we'd entertain a motion for approval of item 3A. Motion by Commissioner Jones, we have a second. Second by Commissioner Wynn. Any questions? It, it does. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. And opposed, nay. That motion carries, will be sent to the consent agenda unless otherwise approved. We have item B, C, D, E, F, and G. Uh, all of those are associated to uh, one particular group, beginning with the Moonhanger Group, the uh, Moonhanger North, Natalia's, uh, Grant's Lounge, Woodward Quill, Rookery Dovetail, and um, Capital Theater. Okay, Capricorn Music and Sound Studio. Uh, is there a preference to do all these at one time, Mayor Pertem Court? I would just like uh, Attorney Frank Howard to walk us through his research about the approval process for all these. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I would be happy to do so if called upon, uh, but I, I do recommend approval of these, uh, of these licenses. <laughs> Thank you for that. Is there an appetite for commissioners to handle all these at one time? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. And opposed, nay. And we'll go ahead and vote on all those, the items that we just mentioned here, which is items B through G. All those in um, motion to approve, please say aye. aye. And I'm actually, let me get a first and a second. A motion to approve. You get a motion? A motion by Commissioner Howell. We get a second? Second by Commissioner Wilder. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries and be sent to consent agenda tonight. 
Item 4A is an ordinance to authorize the appropriation of up to 250,000 American Rescue Plan Act funds to First Choice Primary Care for the purpose of funding the building of a primary care facility on Houston Avenue in Macon Bibb County. At this time, I'd ask uh, Ms. Catherine McLeod if she would come up to the podium, identify yourself, and tell us a little bit about this project that we've been working on on Houston Avenue, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my name is Catherine McLeod. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of First Choice Primary Care. We are a private nonprofit um, with a local board of directors, many of whom you all know. We got started a little over 15 years ago on Walnut Street. We now have six locations. About six, no, seven years ago now, we started working in South Macon. Uh, we went into Dr. Bill Brooks' office and um, he started working with us and we brought additional providers in and helped him convert to electronic medical records. We were there for five years and then we had to move out of that building. It had some problems. Over the last two years, we've been in a rented space, but there's a huge need for primary care in South Macon. And so we have some federal funds um, and we are starting to construct a getting ready to um, build a new clinical office building. It'll be big enough to have at least four primary care providers. It'll probably be two physicians and two nurse practitioners. We'll provide mental health services and we will have a pharmacy. You all may have noticed that the big box national chains have left some neighborhoods. So there's no pharmacy anywhere near the Houston Avenue neighborhood. So that is our plan, and we would be extremely grateful for support from the commission. Okay, thank you very much for that information. And as we previously discussed, we have several uh, numerous uh, initiatives going on in that area, including this particular location is right directly across from our Cliffview project uh, that we expect to get started on very soon, as well as a lot of rebuilding over there in that area. Um, so thank you for being here tonight. Commissioner Bronson, you have a question? N not necessarily a question, just want to say thank you uh, for all the hard work that you are doing for the community. Uh, as you know that um, recently Surgeon General just put out the, uh, the deal against loneliness, right? There's a big uh, per a situation going on right now from the mental health side of the house that deals with loneliness and uh, some of our citizens and so forth throughout middle Georgia after COVID. COVID situation has happened or still experienced some things along those lines. So uh, just to get an additional help, uh, particularly for that particular uh, area, uh, as we all know is needed. And I uh, just wanna say thank you for choosing House and Avenues to be home. Well, thank you. We hope to be able to put community health workers at that site that are really people that are familiar with the neighborhood and kind of build those connections to help address some of the isolation you yes, mentioned. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Watkins. Yeah, uh, thank you. And again, thank you for noticing that House and Avenue was in need of, of this type of, of health care and being able to step in and provide it. Um, uh, again, I, I didn't, I heard you say it was across the street from Cliff Road, but what is the location? Is it a new building or an uh, existing structure? Um, there's no structure there currently. It, the address is 3061 Houston Avenue. Um, it's between Ponce de Leon and Lackey Drive. Um, it is property that we purchased from Unionville Missionary Baptist Church. It was donated to them and it's been sitting vacant. Um, so it will be something new in, in that neighborhood and I think, right? If you walk across Houston Avenue and down the street, you get to Cliffview Lake, so. Awesome, awesome. And out of curiosity, what's the total budget of the construction? I know that we're putting in 250, but new construction has um, cost It's more a little than that. over $2 million. We have a million dollars in a federal grant, and the Peyton Anderson Foundation has given us 250000 And we have a couple of other requests out. Um, we, we have some reserves, but we, we also know we want to do something similar in East Macon. So um, and we don't have all that federal money for East Macon, so. What, um, I guess, what's the timeline of construction um, will begin? The plans are out for bid right now. Um, we um, hope by June we'll have a contract 
um, negotiated and break ground this summer and hopefully by this time next year be done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Commissioner Howell. Yes, ma'am, like the other two commissioners said, I, I appreciate y'all's effort and especially in South Bibb County. Um, taking out the, um, the, the cemetery constituents I have in the northern <laughs> section of my district, this is in the very northern section of uh, District 7. And with that said, I'd like to uh, make a motion we approve. Okay, got a motion by Commissioner Howard. We have a second. Second by Commissioner Wilder. Any further discussions or questions? Hearing those questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Thank you, that motion carries unanimously. We'll be sent to consent agenda. Thank you for being here Thank tonight, Mr. Much. McClellan. Next, we're gonna move on to item B, which is a ordinance to authorize a budget transfer within the IT budget in the total amount of $46,000 between the line items specified to provide funding for planned hardware purchases. This is just a uh, transfer from one line item to another within the budget. Uh, can we get a motion to approve? Motion by Commissioner Wynn. Do we have a second? Second. Second by um, Commissioner Jones. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries will be sent to consent agenda. Item C is the ordinance to authorize a budget transfer within the airport department budget for a total amount of $24,000 from the small equipment and improvements general line item to the repairs maintenance. Similar to the last item, it's a transfer within a budget uh, and it's within the budget amount that they have. This time we'd entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Commissioner Jones, second by Commissioner Howell. Any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. Next is the ordinance to authorize the appropriation of up to $450,000 in American Rescue Act funds, revenue replacement for the purpose of funding phase two construction of the Fire Training Academy to authorize the mayor to issue a change order to the contract for designs and construction of the Macon Bibb County Fire Safety Training in amount up to $450,000 for construction of phase two. Uh, we've got um, Chief Edwards here tonight. I'm not sure who else is gonna be speaking, so um, we'll let you do a brief presentation on what you want to do out there, and then we'll allow our commissioners to ask questions. Okay, thank you for uh, having us here tonight. Uh, with me, I have our Assistant Fire Chief, Chief Stevens, our Training Chief, uh, Ron Smith, and also Lieutenant Garen Flanders, Special Operations Officer, who's been very instrumental in this whole project with the training tower. Uh, so we got the, uh, the, the bulk of the training complex off the ground and running uh, over $3 million, and I truly appreciate your, uh, your support of that. It has truly made a difference in our organization. Uh, morale is at an all-time high, I say, because our firefighters are out there training every day. We're making our firefighters better, more productive, more efficient, and uh, doing a lot of training out there that we've been able to do. However, there are a few other things that, that was in phase one, but because of price increases, inflation over time, some of the things did get cut out of phase one that we want to bring uh, into this phase. Uh, one, for example, is a flashover simulator. That puts our firefighters in the condition that we're in, when they're in a house fire, we can actually simulate and have a true flashover to show them how to properly evacuate and safely get out of a house without them uh, becoming uh, injured and things like that. Uh, so that's very important. Uh, that was one of the priorities on our list. Another one, and uh, for those of you that's visited out there over the last year, we have a lot of conversations about the access going in, uh, the roadways. Uh, that's been uh, a lot of conversation. Uh, we have some very nice equipment in Macon Bibb County. However, for uh, several hundred feet, we're driving across gravel roads, uh, dirt roads, washed out roadways, bringing in half million dollar to million dollar apparatus every day. And we wanted to uh, focus on trying to get that uh, access road paved uh, to where we could uh, safely get in and out. And, um, and also, <clears throat> excuse me, open up to other uh, departments to be able to come in and um, have, a, have a nice entrance and access in and out of the uh, complex out there as well. So roadways is very important. Of course, flashover simulator. Uh, one of the things that we want to put in place out there is a cascade system. A cascade system refills our air cylinders when we're in firefighting conditions. Right now, we have to load up all the cylinders and take them back to headquarters downtown and have them refilled, uh, or we have to bring out an air and light truck to the complex and utilize that truck. However, when it's down for maintenance, or if our unit downtown, which is over 15 <coughs> years old, uh, it needs to be replaced. I will be putting it in the budget in the future to uh, have that unit replaced and upgraded. But when those units go down, we don't have a backup system. 
Uh, so we would like to put an air cascade system at the training complex that's our fire academy so we can use it daily to top, o top off those uh, self-contained breathing apparatus. But also it gives us a backup when the system goes down downtown. Uh, make can be a fire department class one. We can still go out to the fire academy, top off our air bottles after our structure fires and keep our companies in service. Um, so that's uh, another phase of wanting to get that uh, implemented out there as well. Um, Confined space training, you know, every fire we go to, uh, we find ourselves in a confined space situation. There, um, there is a confined space training component that needs to be installed out there at the fire academy. Uh, we'd like to get that implemented as well, and that's just one of the uh, items on the agenda that we'd like to, uh, to put on here and, and, and try to get approved. Um, we said $450,000, our team, uh, it's Lieutenant Flanders, uh, Chief Smith, Chief Stevens have all been working with uh, different companies around uh, the area to, to look at those prices. Uh, we will do our best and, um, and, and try to keep it within that range, and I think that we can get all this done within that. Thank you, Chief. I know also that the, uh, we're, we're very fortunate for the new program that you have there to allow our school students uh, from the College and Career Academy to come out there, and I think that's another important reason we need to make sure it's in top shape and also to ingress and egress for, for whatever transportation they may come out there. Because we all know we went out there when it was raining. It does get a little uh, bogged down in mud, mud there. We do have a couple of questions. So I'm going to Commissioner Watkins, you have a question, sir? So sounds great. I've, I've seen the phase one, seen where y'all came from in the phase one um, uh, upgrades. Looks great. No, no questions there. Trust y'all guys are doing what you need to do with phase two. I was just curious about the, um, it's not really a question for you, probably ends up being more for Dr. Moffitt or Ms. Moore. Um, the phrase revenue replacement, American Active Funds Revenue Replacement, what's that mean exactly and how much do we have left in revenue replacement? Revenue replacement is um, $10 million was what we designated and we've been putting several things against it when you approve CIP. Anytime we're doing a non-federal match to a federal grant, we can pay it out of revenue replacement. These types of administrative, it's just the way that they're wanting us to capture it in the reporting to the um, federal government uh, for, the, for all these funds. So yeah, this is more of a recording mechanism and we, when we were dividing up the money in the very beginning when we got that in, we set aside that in account for, th for these reasons as well as some other CIP that we did. And uh, for those of you who are interested, we have about $18 million left in ARP funds. Um, any other is questions? Is that less the $10 million or the $10 million is? is That's outside of that. That $10 million is already being spent. At, at, it's just it's a designation, but that $10 million is already being spent. This is $18 million in remaining funds total. Okay. Any other questions regarding this particular item for the chief? No one? At this time, we'd entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Commissioner Wilder. We have a second. Second by I heard Commissioner Howell over here second, um, and I heard Mr. Jones third. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries and will be sent to the consent agenda. Going to move on to contracts, purchase orders, and approval. Item A is a resolution to make and Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to execute a memorandum of understanding with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation for the use of the office and warehouse space for anti-gang task force operations in support of local partners operations. Uh, this is something we discussed on our previous meeting and we also had a, um, a press conference out there that some of you were at and everyone should have received a copy and as part of the exhibit tonight on uh, our responsibilities and the GBI responsibilities and this is a memorandum of understanding to basically let them know our commitment to getting that building ready uh, and their commitment to providing the service there. Uh, Mayor Pochin Clark. To be added as a co-sponsor, I think this is a great idea and will significantly impact police presence, which I hear about constantly in my district. So I really appreciate the administration uh, laying in this um, this deal with the uh, with the governor's office. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Walker. Do you have a question, sir? So, I, I, and I read over it, it. It read more like a memorandum between like a real estate landlord tenant type thing. It's to, I guess, actual police presence. Like, what are they guaranteeing us? It seems like they're just moving the, and not just, I'm, I'm sure there are some benefits, but it seems like the same people are moving from the Millersville headquarters to the Macon office, which is a better office for the GBI. And I'm not disrespecting that, but in terms of boots on the ground in Macon Bibb County, I didn't, it didn't, it wasn't blatant in the write-up that that was what was happening. Yeah, I don't know that they're going to put anything blatant in the write-up about what's going to be happening because that's 
what their job is, but it is a lease type situation, whereas we're providing them a building and a location here in Macon Biff County. It does indicate several responsibilities in the information uh, without reading through the entire document. It says support the accomplishment of the mission and goals of MOU by share law enforcement resources and expertise in the supportive efforts of the GTF and its stated mission, identify criminal street gains and implement the best practices in the collection of accurate and actionable intelligence related to the goals of eliminating criminal street gang activities, investigate and seek prosecution of crimes committed by crime, criminal street gangs in accordance with Georgia Street Gang Terrorism Act, Prevention Act, OCGA 16-5-1, establish staff and utilize the castle property as principal office for the GTF in middle Georgia, uh, et cetera. So they can list specific items they're gonna do. Also, they indicate Respectfully. that they're, they're gonna bring in the Georgia Department of Community Su Supervision, Georgia Department of Corrections, Georgia Department of Public Safety and others um, to work in that, that item. We don't know exactly how big the government unit is going to be yet. Some estimates have been about 15 new officers coming in, working together with our officers, helping train them on technology, sharing um, informants um, and things of that nature, building cases for both state and local uh, and federal charges. But all those things listed one through 15 is what their responsibilities are. But the reason it's before you is because we own this property and this is more uh, a situation involving real estate with leases. And the things that you mentioned just strike me as the exact thing that the GBI task force on gang sharing information about gangs, street gangs is what they've been tasked to do for years now. And again, I guess I'm just trying to get an understanding because we're putting up a lot of money on this. Is this for the region or the state task force or is this specifically for Bibb County's gang task force and the GBI providing us with things to help with Bibb County or is it's because it, it's a little vague on if that's what we're getting or is this to assist them in their greater state issue? This is a middle Georgia regional um, gang and drug task force. So this, this is our region. Those 11 counties around Macon Bibb County with their central office being here in Macon Bibb County. And so, right, it used to be in Millersville and now it's moving to Macon. So, I guess the, I'm answering my own question. I Th guess. This is a new unit in Macon. You may have some of the people from Millersville there. I'm not sure if they're closing that office about. Regardless, I, I don't care if they're serving one or 15, they're here in Macon. We have the exposure here. We own that building, so a lot of these improvements that we're doing, we would be doing anyway. Um, and, and I would like it to be a one-to-one -one relationship, not a one to 15 other places, and we putting in 100% of the resources. And I'm willing to do that for the region but I would like a one-to-one -one relationship because gangs here and stuff is pretty serious. Not yeah. Well, that, that, this is the MOU that we're going, we're going to put forth. The sheriff has been backing this 100% and he's in support of it. He's gonna be working there and have someone in that office as well sharing intel. Um, they, they don't do a task force for every single county in Georgia. This is the region. This is something that was attempted to do in 2020 and nobody could ever work anything out and we were finally able to do that this year. So th this is gonna be my recommendation. So I don't know what other questions I can ask, but I think the memorandum of understanding is pretty I think clear. I understand, I understand. Yeah, Commissioner Lucas? Uh, yeah, Commissioner uh, Watkins asked some of the, or made some of the comments, same ones that I wanted to make. But at some point in time, even if we have to go into executive session, um, we, probably need a little bit more information about just how militarized our community is because I, I, I thought that it was just great that at the opening, the press conference, that certain community groups were <laughs> invited to be there. And I think that opens up the lines of communication. The NAACP, I personally suggested they that they be a part of that because if there's something uh, that someone has a complaint about, that's one of the organizations that people are gonna go to. And there are a number of others that, you know, I think will be very, very interested in not only increasing the peace in this community and the area, which is what this is intended to do, uh, but also to protect citizens and make sure they don't feel like they've got the sheriff's department with guns, they've got um, code enforcement with guns, 
They've got this anti-gang uh, task force with guns, and there are many more innocent, peace-loving people in our community than there are, are criminals. Uh, and so I just think we need to always keep that in mind and make sure that we know what's going on with all of this coordination, even if we have to do it in executive session and get that information so that we're, we're at a point where we can respond to some of the things that people are asking. But I do support this. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Commissioner Howell? Yeah, uh, I guess I'd just kind of like to address something that uh, Commissioner Watkins touched on. Um, when we were over there that, that day and it met and there were, you know, the different agencies there, the one thing that I guess I never realized until we went to that meeting, um, I guess I realized it never had put it together, gangs don't stop at county lines. So even though this is a regional thing, it's, uh, it's great that they're going to be centralized in Macon, but, but they were pointing out that, you know, they're some of the same people that are doing stuff here are doing it in Houston and in the other counties. So I, I guess I, I, while I understand what he's talking about one-on-one, -on -one, I think it's, it's, it's better overall for us in Bibb County that, that they're looking at what's going on in the other counties around us too. Good point. Commissioner Jones? <coughs> yes, sir. I, I, I want to be added as a co-sponsor as well. I think it's a great idea. I suspect that we have more gang activity in Bibb County than the surrounding 11 counties just because of our size and population. And the mere presence of these people here is going to be a deterrent. It's going to be good to protect and safeguard the people of this community. So I commend the administration for some great innovative thinking and it's our building and they'll be here and it's it's going to be a plus for Macon Bibb County citizens. Thank you Mr. Jones. Any other questions or concerns before we get a recommendation? Mr. Watkins? Yeah it's not how, how much are the upgrades? We haven't got there yet the, the upgrades will come back before you we will be moving some splash money from public safety other for next year to this year. Uh, we haven't gotten the exact amount of money that's going to cost for the renovations. Our in-house numbers are around $250,000, $300,000. We're moving about $560,000 in the splice because that's what's in there for next year. So that'll come back before you whenever those, those contracts are awarded. Most of those items, like I said, sealing and coating and painting and all those types of things are tr traditionally making sure that the gate's functional. Uh, we also have some, they have to have a vault. They have to have a vault there. And of course, the security has to be there with cameras, et cetera, because of the nature of their work. So all that will come back before commission, but later on in this agenda, you'll see there's a uh, spice movement from next year to this year. Commissioner Lucas? Yeah, I, I remember in a previous discussion, we talked about being reimbursed from the state, because I know the driver's license place, there's an arrangement, and with Secretary of State over there, they don't they, pay us the uh, rent there's been a grant that's applied for for this particular job with this we, we expect that yeah we, we've had conversations with the governor's office as well as their folks on the uh, public safety grants and we we're pretty confident we're gonna be getting that in for, for that us. that they will re reimburse us for all of this not for all of this right here this is coming out of ARP funds but for utilities and expenses and things of that nature on an ongoing basis operations well, they got a big old surplus up there that's sending <laughs> some money. So you got the senator know to tell me. We that, need. Right? Well, we've got two of them <laughs> on appropriation, so right. we probably do. You're the mayor. <laughs> that I am. All right. This time, I entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Commissioner Wilder, second by Mayor Pritchard Clark. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. Will be sent to consent agenda. All right, now we're going to move on to the next item on the agenda, which is item 6A. Item 6A is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an independent contractor agreement with Reeves Construction Company in amount of $2,754,674 for deep patch asphalt resurfacing projects to be paid from LMIG 
GDOT grant funds, road work line item, and 2018 supplies funds, road work property line item. Uh, commissioners, we've been talking about this for a while. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll let our uh, county manager answer those. This is one of two parts. We have another one coming. Is that correct? Uh, on the LMIG? Th this is our contribution as well as what we got from the state. And you should have received an attachment that lists all the roads uh, that we discuss. And what our plan is to do increase that amount, which is the money we generally put down there out of the general, I'm sorry, out of the splice funds by five times that amount. And we expect to do at least two of these this year and continue to do those until the time of our splice. Uh, and we're starting with those fives and fours uh, that we graded on that, that occasion. So at this time, I'm going to entertain a motion for approval in a second, and then we'll take questions. We have a motion to approve the ELME. Motion by Commissioner, who was that? Commissioner Bronson, second by Wilder. Commissioner Wilder. Um, and this time we'll have questions, Commissioner Watkins. You, you answered my question. One of the things that I didn't see on the uh, spreadsheet was the allocation of whether or not these were, what grade they were based on the Roadtronic stuff. And so I was just loosely asking, are there anything that's not a five or a four that's on these lists? Uh, no, sir, should not be, but I can get you that updated sheet that has it. It's in the Excel spreadsheet. I believe we have, <coughs> what, six groups of road. We went back and did, you know, 2022 L MIG. I mean, 2023 L MIG, 2023 General Fund, and then the proposed roads for 24 L MIG and proposed road for 24. But they have that rating on there. If they didn't make it to here, I have that copy for sure. you. Well, and, I, and it seems like we're all on the same page that we're trying to knock out the fours and the fives. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just curious if for some reason threes are twos and ones. Are unless, unless it was a road that y'all had already identified prior to this um, that was covered in 21, 22, or 23, then outside of that, it all fours and fives. Yeah, I'm not aware of any roads below a four that's on this list, and we went from the worst going down. Right. And we do have a second half of this that will be coming. Remember, this is some um, some state money and some of our SPLOS money. The other monies will be coming directly out of our general fund that we did, and it'll be a similar list that we have here. And we've also had some um, uh, commercial uh, stuff that we looked at before, the Joe Tamplin Road and that on President's Parkway. So, uh, Commissioner Lucas, you have a question? It, no, I was just, I looked at the list and I was glad to see that Hollinsworth Road that Commissioner um, Tillman has had on the, it's been on there a while, that that was on there. And then um, what, Old Clinton Road, which is, that that's on there as well. Did, did I overlook Pine Hill or was that on another? I think that's on the upcoming for the 23 or 24 list to be approved. This is the list that's been approved by GDOC. Okay, because Pine Hill has been approved for seven, eight years. And I know it's not a long right. stretch, but it's been approved for a long time. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I, you I, just go, you just. That's it. <laughs> I'm going to verify where it is in there, but just know that these roads are, okay. we, we have significant movement. I think we've seen around the community, we have significant movement in this paving. Okay. And th this is also awarding the contract. Let me, let me touch on a couple other things, too, is, is one thing by doing it the way we're doing it now, using our general funds, we won't have to get those uh, roads specifically approved by GDOT, which is going to expedite the process. The other thing that we're going to make a conscious effort into doing, I hate to kind of get ahead of the the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart before the horse um, is we're working on an RFP or RFQ now to qualify several vendors that typically would do um, could do this type of asphalt your smaller vendors maybe minority vendors but right now you see Reeves got this instruction they the only one can do this large amount of work so we're going to break the next list up to allow an opportunity for smaller vendors to do uh, some roads like they may not can do 10 roads but they can do say Cliffview Lake Road or another road and give us a price on that and allow everyone to kind of get a piece of the pie. And we're discussing uh, how we can reduce the bond requirements on those smaller roads because we don't pay them anyway until it's over. Those are things we can't necessarily do when we're dealing with GDOT and their specifications, but because mm -hmm. we're going to be um, increasing the amount of roads we're going to do with general funds, we have more control over that. So we're making a conscious effort to do that. This next round, you'll see some of that. Uh, but right now, it's in procurement. They're working with our attorneys to send that out. If you remember, just to give you some similarity, when we were initially having a lot of the trash problems early on uh, with dumps and, and having staffing, 
we sent out an RFQ out there for many temporary agencies because we didn't have sufficient staffing to do everything. And they came back and said, these are the people that can do it. So every time we get a road that needs to be done, we can do that. This is kind of the same thing. It gives us a list to choose from of pre-approved uh, vendors in the situation where we can do some of the patchwork, but also uh, allow them to submit bids for the paving as well. So mm -hmm. you'll see that this next round that will be coming to us on the, the roads that's next in line on what we do out of our general fund. Uh, also realize this is the first time that I believe that Macon Bibb County has actually used property tax dollars to pave roads. When people always say I pay my taxes, in reality, the roads that's been paid in the past were done through SPOS dollars, which are paid not only by people who live in Macon, but people who live outside of Macon. And most of it is outside of Macon. So we are making a substantial investment, and that's why I kept stressing the five times that y'all agreed to do before at the meeting the other day, because those are actually coming directly out of our general fund and not part of a particular match. But it gives us more flexibility to get these jobs done. So thank you for that question, Commissioner Wilder. I did notice the, the roads that were, the few roads that were listed in District 6 were some roads we had discussed previously. Is this more or less the final approval to move forward with them? Yes. Okay. That I, I did notice they were on a pre previous thing we discussed here before. Right. So the process, we have to bid them out. Hopefully the bid be 30 days. We get the contractor and they can start work. This is the final thing. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Commissioner Watkins. Hey, remind me, this is paving list. What's the, this is general fund list 23? This one is, this the ailment list 23. This is LMIC list 23? Yes. Okay. So it will be bid out still March 2024? No, I, the should be bid out. Now? Yes. Or, okay. And yep. then it, it, it will be paved? Hopefully within my contractor's timeline, hopefully bid out 30 days. We select somebody in the next 30 days. Hopefully they start working within 60 days. And the next one will be out of the general fund. Commissioner Jones. Yes, sir. Dr. Moffitt, before you go, and I know they run about a year behind. I apologize. That's all right. <laughs> a little medicine working with me. Hey, no, this is the contract to award them so they can start working. Right. So this has been awarded. So this is them to start working. Yeah, yeah th this is why we're talking about Reeves. Yes. They've already been awarded the money and approved by GDOT, and right. they're coming back for inspection. The, the next round is what you were talking about, I think, referred Yes. That's correct. Correct. Right. Okay. Commissioner Jones. Uh, mm. let, let me verify that. I don't have a sheet in front of me. Commissioner Jones. So Dr. Moffitt, I know they run about a year behind, a good year behind. Are they, are they finishing up the 2021 list or is that completed? Where, where do we stand on that? Do you know? Yes, uh, the 2021 list was finished. I think the last road on there was that part on Columbus, Columbus Road. Tidwell. So Everything's finished except the striping. So they right. finished 2021 except for some striping. So 2022, they're working on. 2022 has been awarded. Right. Yeah, but have they begun 2022? No, this is what this award would be. This is 2022. Okay. <laughs> it gets confusing because they run so far behind. Correct. Okay. Well, that plus we're always on a fiscal year and we're thinking about calendar years. Yeah. But we're, we're about to do a general fund that'll come back before you with the next list that we've, we've talked about uh, approved as well. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Wynn? Yes, sir. Thank you, um, Dr. Moffitt. <laughs> just, just clarification. These are from 2022, but they're going to start doing these right now. I mean, Greaves is going to do this. Yes. I mean, we don't have to wait for them to bid anymore. There's no more no. bidding process. No, this I, is what they bid it on. You earlier about this, and I was not sure. I thought we were in the bidding process, but that's been done. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So these people will see some paving starting around town. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. And then we, nothing prevents us from going ahead and doing the other one as well. So that's why we can go ahead and do the, the general fund that we'll bring back for you as well. Nothing will prevent from us sending that out. We don't have to get GDAL approval or anything on that. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. This time, uh, we got one more question, Commissioner Watkins. Oh, no. I was just refreshed that I wasn't the only one slightly confused. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, it gets confusing when you're thinking about calendar years, and we're talking about fiscal year, but also they're about a year behind. Well, they're not a year behind. They just, their cycle runs later than we do. So um, 
Okay, this time we entertain a motion for approval if I hadn't already done so. All right, done so. We're good. We had a motion and second already. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Be sent to the consent agenda. Item B is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Terracon Consultants for required testing for the closure of the Walker Road landfill in amount up to $256,626 to be paid from the 2018 Splice Fund closure and post-closure care. Dr. Moffitt, first question, this is already included in the figures we gave the commission before? It is, it is included in the closure, and I am pleased to announce that on yesterday, via the clerk, I sent a certified letter to EPD stating that we took the last load into the landfill on May 1st, so the landfill is officially closed. All right. Um, <laughs> us up to 365 days for the contractor to complete, but the contractor is, has a schedule of about six months. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this time, we'd uh, entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Commissioner Jones. We have a second. Second by Commissioner Wynn. Commissioner Howell, you have a question. I do. I remember a couple, three months ago, um, we had the engineer in talking about <coughs> the dirt that's got to be acquired. Where are we coming on that? Did, did, has that been... Did, the, did that bid let, did they got a contractor, that, that, he's that, moving dirt? Yes, sir, that is the company we selected and it was included in their bid price to get the dirt that was in that specification. And it came in at, um, was a little over nine million or right at $10 million. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember yeah. that. I just, I'm just, they didn't, they didn't I'm just curious, the are, they, are they hauling dirt yet? Yes, sir, that included the whole process. But that they're, they, but they're yes, moving dirt. Yes, sir, so that's what they, yes, sir. Okay, we do have a motion and second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries will be sent to the consent agenda. Item C is a resolution ratifying an agreement with Wembley Treadwheel, DBA WT Designs, in amount of $58,305 for design services for Carolyn Creighton Park to be paid from the SPLOS 2018 Fund Recreation Central City Park property line item. This time we entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Bronson, can we have a second? Second by Commissioner Wynn. And Ms. Lucas, you're looking confused. Is this the sign? This is Carolyn Creighton sign that was done in the, in the it is. structure what, that was built? Yes, okay. it, was, was, it is what was constructed to re replace the ticket booth, which is the columns and the sign that's the entrance into that sidewalk. Okay. Any questions regarding that? Fifty-eight thousand three hundred five $58,305. That was design and construction. Oh, okay. Well, that's one I didn't read very carefully because I didn't remember it being split out like that. Okay, um, okay. that makes more sense. Okay. <laughs> we do have because I thought the design was already done long time ago for. Part, I think they did some of the, the ticket booth design they originally did, but they were they were five six hundred thousand dollars a week. It was scaled back a little bit. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Thank Watkins. You. Yeah. Um, this is great. I'm not sure if it's included or not or up upcoming, but we, me and Clay and some others have talked about it on and off over the years. Um, the train that we refurbished in the front, um, at some point we was, it looks really great, looks beautiful. Love it. Thank y'all. Um, but I, the reason that it got damaged was because it was exposed to the elements, the weather and the rain, just beating up on it every day. And I know at one point, they, I don't know how far we got with it, but the idea of putting some type of cover over it. The simplest answer is that it is in the CIP wish list for upcoming to put a pavilion cover over it. But I will admit I'm one that was a... Uh, um, Naysayer. It, it looked great. <laughs> it's been holding on great. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm very pleased with the outcome and everything going on, so we definitely need to do more to preserve it. But it is on that CIP uh, wish list for next year. Okay. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? We do have a motion and a second. If there are no further questions, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries to be sent to the consent agenda. Item D is a resolution to approve the 14th, I'm sorry, the 40th <laughs> amendment, ooh, 40th amendment to the 2018 Splash Project timeline 
and a budget as presented by the splash project manager. This is just a approval of the amendment. Can I get a motion to approve? Is that Commissioner Wynn? You got a second? Second, Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Watkins, question? A little bit about the amendment, please. This is moving forward the 562,000 from next year into this year so that we can move forward with the GDOT um, improvements. It's the next item. Yeah. Um, I guess could have switched them up, but basically this is because there is an amendment of bringing money from next year to this year. We y'all set up a, a pattern over the last couple of years of doing an amendment. And then the, uh, the next item is actually the uh, uh, moving that specific amount of money up to appropriate up to. So this is the amendment, which includes that item next, next only. And am, am I to interpret that the Department of Transportation <coughs> building on Martin Luther King is the same as the council for the That's game correct. unit? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. And I know earlier it mentioned 250, and, but this is 562 because something else is in it? I, I know you were explaining it a little earlier, but I wasn't. Now we're just moving the entire amount up. What, like we discussed the last time, we are way ahead of collections on, on the SWAS dollars. And instead of going back and nickel and diamond every time we get a receipt up, we've got some estimates from our facilities on what they believe it's going to cost. We know that this amount is sitting there for, for a public safety other for next year, so we're moving that entire amount up. Uh, in the event we don't use it, it'll still sit there, but it'll be able to be appropriated this year for other projects if we need it. Okay. okay. We do have a motion and second on item D. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries and we sent the consent agenda. The next item is one we mentioned several times. This is the ordinance to authorize the appropriation of up to $562,054 from 2018 splash funds proceeds for the purpose of paying costs related to the renovations of the Department of Transportation building located on MLK Boulevard, also known as the Castle. Uh, this time we entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Commissioner Bronson. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Wilder. Any other questions? Here are no questions. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries and be sent to the consent agenda. Item seven is amending the code of ordinances. This is the ordinance of Macon Bibb County Commission to amend section 29202D of the Macon Bibb County Code of Ordinances to provide for more efficient approvals to the street light process. Uh, this amendment will allow us to be more expedient in processing the street lights. And basically what it allows us to do is that once we get an approval from our facilities, we can go ahead and, and begin to work on those street lights without having to take two or three more weeks to come before commission. Uh, and any ones that, that are get denied will come directly to commission so you can see those that are denied. Okay. So at this time, I entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Commissioner Howard. We have a second. Second by Commissioner Jones, Commissioner Watkins. Yeah, I'm, I guess I've been anxious and hoping somebody would send like a, 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 a better follow up for me. I know we've approved probably close to 100 street lights <coughs> as a commission here in the last few weeks, which kind of note that people in general of the city had some lighting issues. Uh, so excited to see folks taking the initiative to fill out those proposals. Um, I know last time I asked, we had got to the point where we start processing the first batches, it seemed like, of, of street lights. And I was curious at this point, is there any report on how many or what percentage roughly we've been able to fulfill of the orders that we've received so far? I, I don't have any update on that. We can if we just make a note for Dr. Moffitt to include that into his county manager's report from facilities as they come in. I, I guess one of, <coughs> as it's a new process, I know right now on my mind, because I've ver verbally approved several of them, I'm concerned about several of them and I'm watching them through the process. Once they stop coming here, I won't know if it's taken, I don't, I won't know if we, how will I know if we've continued to receive streetlight requests and at what pace are they getting completed? Because right now the reporting is, I think we can agree less than. I don't know if there's a mechanism to report back to commission every time somebody does a, the job, but I do believe. And I can that agree on that, but just in broadly. I do believe that we can have the county manager put that information in a report for you so you can kind of keep up with the ones that were approved. I don't think it, it'll be too much trouble when we receive a request to tell you which ones has been approved so you'll know that the timeline will start there. And if he's got a way that when they actually get installed to, to recognize that, I think 
Rob Riles can put that in his facilities report and we can just pass it along. I, you know, it's no magic now. I think we're all just kind of, we're just kind of, um, it's a wait and see because every single neighborhood is different on how long it's going to take. And that's called what zip codes you're in. It's because of whether there's a pole, whether or not we own the pole, somebody else owns the pole, whether or not it's one light or two lights. There's a lot of different variances that, that cause things to go. And then, of course, we're at the, we're at the pleasure of the, uh, the utility company itself. So it's been kind of hard to just give you a flat time on this takes two to three weeks because really it takes however long they're going to take to do it because it's out of our control. But I think that will allow you at least to monitor it somewhat through facilities to see if there's any issues or a way to be more efficient. If it's, if it's no sensitive timeline to this, I would request that we table this just until we get that refor re first report back on what we've done so far. And I'll make that in the form of a motion. I don't know if anybody else has any desire to see stuff, but. Mr. Watkins has a motion. Does someone got a second? Okay. That dies for a fellow second. Commissioner Lucas, you had a question? Uh, not a question, but a statement. At the last meeting of the Pedestrian Safety Review Board, um, the report was given that there had been many, many streetlights approved by this commission. And so pedestrian safety commends this commission on the numbers of uh, streetlights that have been put in place, that have been recommended and approved and the rapid rate. And these are the sentiments of the Pedestrian Safety Review Board, and they're saying, you know, keep it up. Thank you, Commissioner Lucas. Commissioner Clark, Procton Clark. Um, yeah, I just, with reading the legislation and just uh, with your overview earlier, am I to, I just want to restate it if I, and see if I'm correct. The denials, if they are of particular import to a neighborhood in our district, will become, will become before this commission and the commissioners will have a case to make for overriding that denial. Am I right in that? Uh, all denials will come before this commission for a final determination. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we do have a motion in second. There's no further questions. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries to be sent to consent agenda. At this time, we have no need to go into executive session. Um, and the time is now eight minutes till six o'clock and we have a meeting at six o'clock, Commissioner Watkins. Yes. I know points, um, agenda amendments are usually on the first part of the meeting, but I, I know from Commissioner Bronson, I had co-sponsored and had to have some coffee about it and got asked to send some drafts um, and I didn't see the Houston Avenue bill on the agenda today and I was wondering what's going on. So I was informed to either this meeting or the six o'clock meeting will still be okay to do it, or is that? You can do it either meeting. If you, what we're talking about, I assume here is a new agenda item that Commissioner Bronson would like to sponsor that did not make the agenda. So his option is to whether he wants to ask for that to be added to the agenda. Uh, if he does ask for that to be added to the agenda, we'll, we'll entertain a motion and a second if it okay. gets a second. At that time, we'll take a vote. If it gets five votes, it'll be added to the agenda. If it does not get five votes, it will not get added to the agenda. Uh, Mr. Bronson, you have a pleasure, sir? Let's uh, swing for it. I'd like to put a motion in to add to the okay. agenda. He'd like to make a motion to add to the agenda item concerning House and Avenue that he has circulated to commissioners. We have a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. We'll take a vote. And any discussion regarding that? I'm sorry. Yes. Commissioner Bronson, go ahead. So Ms. Ms. Ross will be passing out the resolution uh, that's been worked on it. Just kind of a quick scale on this. Now, th this is about adding it to the agenda and I'm not discussing the facts or merits of it until there's until you take a vote. Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, right. it's not a debate, what I'm saying. This did not get in depth. If you want to tell them what this vote's Oh, about, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So long story short, the, the resolution in place right now is to ask uh, for 2.4 million to go into House and Avenue. Uh, 1.4 that would come from a, uh, ARP funds. 1 million of that would come from general fund. Thank you, ma'am. Um, while I understand that we have current services right now that, that we're providing, uh, the overall deal here basically is when we start looking at the, the, the amount up for a House and Avenue, not looking at it from a district standpoint, but from an area standpoint, uh, I know that um, Bill Howell, Commissioner Howell, will be picking up that area, such as Glendale, Tri Tri Triple Hill, Ponce de Leon, and Emory. 
So that's part of the district that this would include in. Uh, a lot of the deal in regards to uh, family members and so forth that we may have buried in Evergreen, right? When we start talking about that, that would address uh, some of the issues that we're having with illegal dumping right behind Evergreen to include Evergreen Cemetery. And then I know from a business standpoint, I know we're trying to work hard to get Cliff View uh, up to par. We're trying to get uh, the amplitude, amplitude up to par. This will tie in also uh, to the um, Eisenhower bid that was take, that took place up under Commissioner Tillman's leadership. So the, the overall deal here, right, um, for this particular resolution is putting that money in uh, to be more effective, to be efficient and direct in what we're doing. Um, I know there's some concerns from Mayor Pro Tem in regards to the safety, uh, in regards to Cliff View, and this would include uh, Cliff View, First Choice Primary court, uh, Care, and then the Eisenhower bid. So uh, if you're, when you're reading through this resolution, you'll see that it addresses some of the issues and concerns that you all have brought to me. Uh, to include uh, producing an ad hoc committee to go to develop a line by line item that will pretty much um, case out what needs to be done, but th it is not to exceed the 2.4 million that we're requesting. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. We did have a motion and a second, and now we'll um, entertain a roll call vote. Yeah. So we, we just need to be have some clarity here. This is about adding it to the agenda, not making arguments for or against it because it's not added to the agenda yet. So it would be improper to have a debate and discuss something that's not on the agenda. Just trying to be clear with that. If you got some uh, question about whether it should be added to the agenda or not, it would be appropriate. But if you want to discuss the item that's not added to the agenda, that would be improper. And an attorneys weigh in if, if you think that I'm reading this incorrectly. Attorney, let me get Attorney Gruber. I'm sorry, Commissioner. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, what I wanted to do was to offer an amended um, ordinance. Well, it, it would be a resolution uh, to as a substitute to what's in front of us. When, when would that be appropriate? After the sorry, after the vote on the adding it, and then if it gets on the agenda, you can do a motion for a substitute but, you know, but if it doesn't get on the agenda then you can add you can add, make a motion to add your substitute to add. okay yeah. i'll wait until then thank you commissioner lucas any other questions commissioner Watkins? yes so and again this is this is i think I, i've been having this issue with getting items on the agenda since since this administration took place again commissioner bronson myself Commissioner Lucas, Commissioner Tillman would like to discuss how to improve Houston Avenue. He's went through the, all the channels with legal to make a valid uh, amendment uh, ordinance amendment or whatever it is, and he would like to discuss it amongst the body. I, I don't know if any of y'all have driven on Houston Avenue or paid any attention to the situation there, but it is terrible. And I commend this young man for attempting something to try to improve it. It's thick, it's thoughtful. I would like to have it validly heard, but we have a problem getting on the agenda the regular way um, due to it being the mayor's decision or not. Um, and again, we went through this whole agenda. We asked questions, nobody had, I had no problem with approving anything, but I do want Commissioner Bronson to have his day in court, so to speak. Yeah. And it requires at least one other member to at least, even if you're going to vote no later, at least hear him out, H hear his presentation, because he's trying. So I, I yield. Thank you, Mr. Walker. I, I hate to have to keep re reliving this every time. Commissioner, I'm sorry, Attorney Gruber. You, you got to clear up the law first. You need, need to. No, this, these are germane to the adding. Any comments germane to adding this to the uh, the, the agenda is appropriate. So, Mr. Tillman. I was just trying to say how we get to this point. I mean, all of it, it, I mean, y'all making it seem like what, what's the issue about putting anything on the agenda? I mean, is, what, what's the issue? I mean, he was. I mean, I, he just asked me over the weekend about it and shared some information. So I mean, well, all we're doing is following the process that y'all been following since we got here, as far as how items get on the agenda. It's no different from when you had the committee system when Commissioner Watkins sat on the chair. If it didn't pass your committee, it never got on the agenda. It's no different now, except then, don't we, it, you had to have at least three to come out of committee. 
Now it's five. We're just following the charter. The charter says that if it's not added to the agenda, and we, we've had this discussion over and over again, if it's not added to the agenda, then any commissioner with five votes can add it to the agenda. Well, why would you I mean, that, that's quite honestly what we're talking about. I want to be clear about something. I don't have an issue with adding anything to the agenda. I understand. And that committee process, you're absolutely right, in a five committee member, but in acting as the committee of the whole, I mean, there's committee on committee. I mean, so basically, I think somebody's trying to make a point that you don't want it on the agenda. Because, I mean, if that's the case, what happens is your influence automatically influences others not to support it. And so what I'm saying is I want to know if that what, what is the – what I'd like to know, when y'all want, when y'all have an issue about getting something on the agenda, I'd like to know what's the issue coming from the mayor or the administration as to why you don't want it on the agenda. You know, because I don't want to be supporting something and saying I'll support something and it can't even get on the agenda, which is really supposed to be a simple process of well, getting it, something it, on the agenda. So, so that's what I, I'm asking is because I haven't had a chance to talk to you yeah. if it's an issue. But like, what is the issue? I don't want it on the agenda because I mean, we've got so we've got money and funds to fund projects, and so. But I'll just wait. Just, yeah. what's it, just well, I don't want to get into the, the, the merits of it, but I'm just saying, Commissioner Tillman, is is nobody's reinventing the wheel here. Is the bottom line is if you got five people who want to add it to agenda to support, it's going to pass. And, and there's, if it doesn't have that, then you don't have the support to pass it. And, and Commissioner Bronson has shared that. And I'm not going to get into details of why I should or should not support that, but we have we have rules here, and we're following the rules. And the rule says if you don't have, if it doesn't get put on the agenda by the chair, and I happen to be the chair of this organization right now, then any commissioner can add with five votes, and it takes five votes. There's been plenty of times that you had, that Miss Lucas had, that Miss Wynn had, Commissioner Jones had ahead of time that came and actually worked through some things to make sure there was going to be a consensus that we put on the agenda so we don't have to take up all the time out here debating something that's never going to pass. I sat through, and I know I'm getting long-winded, but I sat through two years of meetings that I sat and watched this commission, in my opinion, was very dysfunction because you brought out every single issue and you debated out here in the public on things that were never going to pass. And what happens was it made you, and I'm using you facetiously, say something to someone else on the commission, there was a back and forth and it ruined the relationship in my opinion. So as the chair of this organization, I'm not gonna allow that to happen. And I'm relying on the rules that we have before us until those rules are changed. And the rule says, if you got five people that will vote for it, I'll be happy to add it to the agenda. And then we'll take the process from there. If five people do not support it, it will not get added to the agenda and it, it will not get voted on at this meeting. So that, that's where we're at on here. So at this time, we'll take a, um, a vote. Commissioner Watkins. I, I yield the commission to me. Mr. Tillman. Uh, I want to follow up on this and just say this. Um, again, I don't have an issue with anything going on the agenda. I had some strong reservations about GBI coming in here and the deal we gave them. But I said quietly, and I could make a case for MVP versus them coming into here, all the money that we're spending that I think we're doing a better job on, but I didn't say anything because some things are left better said to the administration. But if we're gonna to try to get stuff on the agenda, it's imperative that we meet and get with the administration and hash out those issues and then come out here and debate it because he's absolutely right to sit around and seem like it's us versus them or whatever, or whoever, you know, uh, I don't like it. And, uh, you know, so uh, uh, with that, I yield. And uh, again, I don't have an issue with anything getting on the agenda. Attorney Gruber. Okay. Commissioner Bronson. It, <coughs> while, I, while I appreciate the, the debate, the healthy debate, because we all are in, still in learning stages here and there, the primary focus, as stated before, I don't want that to take away from the primary focus, and that's an opportunity for us as a commission, not just a district, not just the mayor, not just the commissioners, but for us as a district to be intentional. I said that when I first got in office, I want us to be intentional about what we do and how we operate. Mr. Mayor, you've done a fine job, but this is where the road, the rubber meets the road. 
I, I, I support the Cliff View mission on that end, right? And I, and I get it. I get it. That's a big sum of money. But just think about the impact that it can have on the children that are there and the next generations to come. Think about the businesses that can, that can um, be supported by this when it boils down to Housing Avenue. It does us no good, respectfully, to put Cliff View on that side of town and not support the surrounding areas. It does us no good to put an amphitheater up on, our, on Mercy, Mercy University and not support the surrounding areas. I know where you're going. Thank you. For, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this is what we're trying to avoid. We, we have process and procedures for a reason, and I, I, I appreciate the latitude that our attorney wanted to give everybody to, to say some comments, but we, we do have rules that we govern by, and that's all we're trying to do is follow the rules that we have in place. Whether you like them or not, there's some rules I like and some that I don't, we're following those rules. This is the same process uh, that, that's happened before. So right now, all we're trying to determine is whether or not this gets on the agenda to have a discussion about it. And at that point in time, whether it passes, fails, later goes and gets vetoes, or whether there's a separate ad hoc committee that's put together to discover it further. But this is not the proper time to talk about the specifics of this agenda item. It's not even on the agenda. Yes. It's, just, it's just a backdoor way to try to have a conversation. Attorney Gruber. Yeah, let me say one thing. I mean, the, the, the motion is to add to the agenda. Comments germane to that motion, as I think most of these have been, are fine. The movement has articulated the motion and the ordinance he's proposing and why it should be on the agenda. But just try to limit, I'm just saying, there's sometimes they, the, the merits of the motion and the procedural aspects of the motion kind of bleed together. I know it's hard to keep them separate sometimes, but just we're going to have a substantive discussion if this gets added on to the agenda. So just try to keep your comments to the merits of adding to the agenda. So with that, I'll turn it over. Thank you. Mr. Watkins. So just, just want to speak briefly to the dysfunction and the, the, the order of, of the rule that I've, I've been coming in this building now for four mayors, um, served uh, since I was 15 years old, served here for 15, 16 years. And a trend that I've noticed through all of those years across all mayors, probably even before the ones that I tracked, that it's very easy to work together <coughs> when they are things of abstract. Renaming the street after someone, changing the policy, we find ways to work together. But I always, even, even before I was elected, I've noticed and tried to work on when it comes to actually putting, allocating money, the reason that we're here, the reason that government exists, allocating dollars to marginalized communities, particularly when it's folks of color asking for those things, that's when stuff starts happening. That's when we get to know the rules very good. The lawyer, we get cut off, everything has to be perfect. That's always when stuff happens in this building. And I, I yield just right there. And I'm asking today, change it up once. Let us talk about a community that needs help. That's why all the shootings happen. That's why all the poverty is. Let us talk about this on the agenda with some, with some clarity. There's an item on the item. There's an item to be voted on. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Watkins. I wish it was that simple, but it's not. Miss, Commissioner Lucas. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Attorney, would it be appropriate to, uh, for this commission to vote to uh, Approve placing this on the agenda and then uh, approve a motion to table it for a study committee. I'm just throwing that out there, offering it. It does not move it forward. It moves it into a committee, I, I'm assuming being chaired by Commissioner Bronson, that could study this and bring it back at Right. A later time. That's right. Well, the, the, uh, could I, that? I think I understand what you're saying, which is the proper procedure is if you add this to the agenda, it becomes an action, substantive action, or substantive a substantive item that the uh, the body can then do whatever it wants with. So, if you add it to the agenda, if the governing authority adds it to the agenda, then it would be in order if somebody made a motion to table that item for whatever reason you want to table it for. So yes, that would be in order what you're describing. It, it, yeah, it looks to me like that would achieve, would you? Well, well, uh, okay. So let's, right. let's, are we, uh, I think, can I, if we had a can I give an opinion? <laughs> can I give an opinion? We need to vote on the motion yeah. to act. Is, right. is everybody okay with that? 
Yes. Yeah, got a motion there. No, don't don't make, make, make me look no, bad no, now. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll make some. Okay. Uh, we got a motion to add. Commissioner Tillman has called for the question. All those in favor of calling the question, please say aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Aye. No, calling for the question. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Start with Commissioner Tillman. How do you vote, sir? Commissioner Watkins, how do you vote? Commissioner Howell, how do you vote? Commissioner Wilder, how do you vote? Mayor Proton Clark, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Jones, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Lucas, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Bronson, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Wynn, how do you vote? What's the total? Five four. Five, four. Okay. We add it to the agenda. Commissioner Lucas, Commissioner Pro Tem Clark, like a motion to the table. Do we have a second? Second by who? Commissioner Wynn? Okay. We have a motion and second. All those in favor of adding it to the uh, table on this issue, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Motion is now table. All right. Mr. Lucas? At the study committee, <laughs> uh, part of it so that it doesn't just die in committee? Die, ELB yeah. table. Yeah. Motion now or later? Okay. Yes. All right. Now there. We through? Yeah. All right. All right. A lot of good discussion tonight. So uh, we are a little bit behind. So we're going to go ahead and uh, end this particular meeting we're in, and we're going to get right into our next meeting right away, unless someone needs a comfort break. Okay. So at this time, we're going to end our meeting, and I'd like to call the next meeting to order. So a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for patiently waiting with us tonight as we handle our business, and we are only about 12 minutes late. Uh, we do have some items to discuss tonight, but we're going to begin our meeting like we do always with our uh, call to order and welcome you here to this Tuesday, May the 2nd, regular scheduled com committee of uh, commission meeting that we have. And we have our pastor, Ramona Bethany. Is Ms. Bethany here? Thank you for being here tonight. If you don't mind, she's from the uh, Community Church of God. If you'll go over there to the microphone, everybody that still uh, can, please stand and bow your head and she'll lead us in prayer and that'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for being with us throughout this day. We recognize that it's because of your grace and mercy that we have even made it to this point. We ask, God, that you will continue to bless and guide Mayor Miller and the commissioners as they discuss the things that impact this community. We ask that you will give them wisdom. We ask that you will give them strength. We ask that you will bless them in their bodies and in their mind. We ask, Father, that you will bless their families as well. We're believing, God, that your will will be done, and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do as well as, well as what you've already done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All these microphones and all these adults here, and I heard a child do the whole Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> God is good. Thank you. I see. That's what we like. Thank you, young lady. We appreciate that. Uh, we do have, um, I don't know of any announcements we have tonight or presentations, but we do have uh, one presentation for the Mental Health Awareness Month. And who has that proclamation? <laughs> I'm supposed to be re reading a proclamation for mental health matters. Uh, yes, ma'am? Mayor, I need to add something to the agenda, please. It's a presentation. I'm say to say it. yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Commissioner Lucas. Thank you, for you very much. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mr. Mayor, uh, after that, we'll back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> All 
How you gonna make I don't know whether we need to do this or not. I'm not going to rule you table. out of order either. Uh, okay. Motion All right. table. Motion table. Um, I want to ask uh, my colleagues to join me, please. Um, this morning, let me turn this thing around. Thank you. This morning, we were over in the Mill Hill area of your city. It's the birthplace of Macon. Over Coliseum, you know, that area over there where there's a very, very fine refurbished auditorium that many people remember fondly, but it had uh, become, you know, um, dilapidated like a lot of other structures in that area. And we were over there to celebrate the 499th and 500th um, tearing down of a dilapidated structure in your city. We were so very happy that that took place. And I think the majority of us, where's the others? They're behind me. Oh, good. Um, the, maj <laughs> the majority, I, I, they let me do this stuff because I've been here so long. And um, they treat me like their like their mama. I fuss at them, you know. Uh, but this morning was a tremendous day for all of us because over the years, uh, Valerie, come join us. Oh, <laughs> see, <laughs> see. Uh, um, come on, daughter. <laughs> over the years, we have had some priorities. Uh, getting rid of substandard houses, uh, making sure the roads were uh, paved, resurfaced, uh, stormwater, all of these different things we've worked on, increasing our support for our public safety employees, all of those, those things we've been supportive of. We voted for and we voted to approve monies for those things. We've been kind of disappointed over the years because we have not been able to do as much as we wanted to, to do over the years. And we could place blame, but we're not here to do that today. We're at a point in the history of Macon where we're celebrating 200 years of our history and Macon is indeed on the move and I've been here long enough that I can really see see it just like children you just have to gather them so uh, Mayor Miller would you come and stand here please uh, Mayor Miller spoke uh, this morning um, and we got to we're still working on him y'all we gotta we gotta work on him <laughs> we got to work on. <laughs> okay. But um, standing over there this morning, I, I teared up uh, at the idea of the progress that we were making as a community and how excited we are that it seems like we've been let loose and there's just so much going on in this community. You can see it everywhere you go. Uh, Mayor Miller, I was in a meeting on Saturday morning and there were some people there and they were talking about the things that aren't going on in Macon. It was in, in Bellevue. They were talking about what's not happening and all of that. I said, we're not doing a good enough job of letting people know what's going on in this community because there's so much happening and we can all say that we are a part of it. So, Mayor Miller, I'm going to read this and we're going to, as a uh, group of colleagues here, uh, I want to read it and then have us all to present it to you. This is a resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission commending Mayor Lester M. Miller for achieving 500 nuisance property demolitions and for other purposes. If you'll clap on that. <laughs> now, I'm just going to go to the um, uh, most important parts 
of the whereases. There are a lot of them on here. Um, it says on here that whereas we're making great strides in this community, and it says whereas the Macon Bibb County Blight Program has featured a multi-pronged approach, including developing a robust code enforcement department, significant cleanup efforts from the public works, solid waste and parks department, and assigning the county attorney's office to craft novel customizable <laughs> legal remedies to address blighted properties based on the conditions on each individual property. And whereas the Macon Bibb County Blight Program has become a model for blight remediation in Georgia with other jurisdictions contacting or visiting Macon to meet its people and learn its blight processes for their own use. And we saw that uh, this uh, past week in Savannah at the Association County Commissioners where they were looking at so many things that Macon Bibb County has and it makes you feel so good to be away from home in a place as progressive as Savannah and to have them to want to know more about what's going on in, in Macon uh, Bibb County. Uh, cities like Atlanta, Dublin, Perry, and Houston County and the city of Albany have all inquired about what's going on in Macon. Now, I'm going to jump to the honorary part of it. And it says, be it resolved, um, be it resolved that the Macon Bibb Commission hereby declares that all of the foregoing things that we've said, good stuff, that we've said, uh, that we uh, resolve uh, by this commission and hereby so resolved by the authority of the same that the Honorable Mayor Lester M. Miller is hereby formally commended on this, the occasion of the 500th nuisance per se blight demolition for the successes of the Macon Bibb County Blight Program to date and the improvements that this program has made to the Macon Bibb County uh, Commission. And if he were signing this, we would say in witness whereof, he has hereunto set his hand and caused the seal to be affixed. I said it so many times, <laughs> I remember it. And so this is your uh, ordinance and we hereby commend you and thank you Dr. Fickling for the work that you did on helping us to get this together uh, so very quickly. Uh, Mayor Miller, thank you and keep that spirit going. Where we can support you, we will support. As you know, these folks feel very, very seriously about a lot of issues and where we don't, we just don't. <laughs> But um, we commend you and thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. I can't follow that except for to say thank you, Lester, or thanks, Lester, I guess is what, what this community's grown to love saying. Um, this, today was a special day. Uh, these, these blighted properties have drawn on the souls of our neighborhoods for too long. And the team you've put together in your administration that this commission has supported the entire time uh, is getting something done that has been talked about for decades. And we all thank you and we commend you. And Mr. Attorney, if it's appropriate, I'd like to make the motion on the resolution. Well, since the mayor's out of the chair, I guess I'll, I'll preside. Uh, <laughs> the motion will be in order to add this to the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Hearing no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries, Mr. Mayor. And we have a token. This is a, a brick from the 500th house. And this 500th house, it meant a little bit more too. It not just an investment in the future, but it's an investment in the long standing history here too. This land for where the, this house was on is going to be donated to the National Historical Park land from the Urban Development Authority, which, it will, be, which will be the next National Park and Preserve. So this, this brick represents the future, Mr. Mayor, and thank you. So please, y'all, come on.
Thank you, Commissioner Lucas. Perhaps you should have done that before we had our last discussion. <laughs> <laughs> you usually give me that wink, so I know I know I got to expect something. But I, uh, I, 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 all seriously, it, it takes a team effort, and, and I, I say it many times. I have the pleasure of sitting in this chair and getting to speak a lot, but we have a lot of good people behind us. But but for the support of the nine commissioners, I have the pleasure to work with. Uh, month after month, we wouldn't be able to appropriate the funds to do these things that we're doing. Also, the code enforcement has done a wonderful job. I can't say that enough. They were all out there today doing their jobs. Our fire department, our public works, our solid waste, it takes a, a, a effort of everybody working together to uh, make this happen. And I just, I'll take the brick on everybody's half, but it's, it's something that's shared by me. I'm out of breath. I don't know why. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I, um, I really do appreciate that, and I, and I meant what I said last Tuesday. I appreciate it. I think everybody was at our State of the Community Address. Uh, it, it felt good to have the support and the unity for everybody there, and I said it then, I said it now. I love each and every one of you. Um, I will always have your back. Uh, we're not always going to agree, and sometimes when I have to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a rank and I'm going to pull a charter on you because that's what I do as mayor, and I think that people elected me to do that. So. Uh, Thank you for your, for your gift. At this time, we're going to continue on. We have a very important uh, Mental Health Awareness Month proclamation that I'm going to present uh, in just a moment. I know some people are here for that and certainly appreciate all of them from being there. So I'm going to step down from my seat and I'm going to read this proclamation and we'll take some pictures and finish our business today. If you don't mind, all those that are here, Ms. Andrea Cook and your team, if you don't mind coming down up front, we'd appreciate it. Thank you all for being here tonight. Barnes, get on in here. Slide down. <laughs> Tommy knows where to stand. Before I again, let me, let me thank our district attorney for being here tonight. Thank you, Anita Howard, for uh, what you do for our community, but also being a supporter uh, mental health and as we know this the entire county commission realizes the significance that mental health plays in our community and that's why they um, together with myself created the mental health matters program and has funded that uh, for the last two years and I will tell you Commissioner Lucas while you're in uh, uh, Savannah doing all that hard work uh, right there uh, people are recognizing Macon Bibb County and, and it's for the positive things and one of those other things other than the blight and we, we get open records requests filed all the time on our blight program because it truly is out of the box things that are working. Uh, the other thing that we get constant questions on is how in the world is Macon Bibb County able to uh, fund a mental health program at no cost and it's because we had an intentional effort to make sure that it's a priority and we realize that uh, if we're ever going to attack the problems that we have in our community with crime and, and violence, uh, we're going to have to give serious, serious conversation. Uh, and I, I was at the Capitol not too long ago, and I'm taking too much time, but I just want to tell you, when they asked me about this item and that item and this item, they're like, what, what, what do you think? What do you recommend? What about housing? And I said, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm glad that this government in Atlanta finally got together on a bipartisan measure like House Bill 1013 to look at the mental health program in, in our Georgia. We lag way behind. I don't even, I'm embarrassed to even say the number we're at now is, is so low compared to everybody in the United States. And I said, so this year, this upcoming year, you've done a good job of, of laying the foundation. How about putting some money to it? And, and I said, you got $6 billion. Put some money in mental health because that's where you can make the biggest difference. If you want to solve this affordable housing problem and all that we got, if you want to solve the crime problems we have, put some money in mental health. If you want to make Anita Howard's jobs easier and the sheriff's job easier, fund mental health. 
So that's my plug, and, and certainly we're going to take that to the Capitol this year and make sure that they start sending some funding with us instead of these unfunded mandates to really put their money where their mouth is on mental health. So this is a proclamation, Office of the Mayor, Macon, Bibb County, Georgia. Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well-being, and whereas all Americans experience times of difficulty and stress in their lives, and whereas prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of mental illnesses, and whereas there is a strong body of research that supports specific tools that all Americans can use to better handle challenges and protect their health and well-being, and whereas mental illness are real and prevalent to our nation, and whereas with their early treatment, those individuals with mental illness can recover and lead full productive lives, and whereas each business, school, government, agency, health care provider, organization, and citizens share the burden of mental illness and have a responsibility to promote mental wellness and to support prevention efforts. Now, therefore, I, Lester M. Miller, do hereby proclaim May 2023 as Mental Health Awareness Month in Macon, Bibb County, and I urge all citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, and school in Macon, Bibb County to recommit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health, the steps of our citizens can take to protect their mental health, and the need for the appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental illness in all ages and all stages. In witness whereof I am here to set my hand and cause a seal of the consolidated government to be affixed this first day of May 2023, signed by myself, Lester M. Miller, Mayor of Macon, Bibb County. Thank you. All right, we're back on program. Uh, earlier tonight, <laughs> in a meeting we held, we had uh, numerous items on consent agenda. First of all, do we have any public comments on agenda items? We can do that. Do we have any public comments on agenda items? No. At this time, we'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes from our August, April the 18th, 2023 regular meeting. Had a motion to approve? Got a motion by Commissioner Wynn, second by Commissioner Jones. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. Not aware of any old business, but we have a consent agenda tonight, items A through T. At this time, I entertain a motion to um, approve consent agenda items A through T. Motion by Commissioner Jones, we get a second. Second by Commissioner Wynn. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. We still do not have a need to go into executive session, but I would like to tell commissioners that uh, next week, Next week, we'll uh, have an agenda, a short agenda, but we'll be going on a field trip. Uh, we're going to go to um, visit our new tax assessor's office, our ECD, Home First, Land Bank Authority, the Civil, Civil Sheriff's Service Office, um, and we're going to go to view the new courtrooms at the Macon Mall, and we're going to go to the Board of Elections to give you an update on that. We're scheduled to have that ready in June, but we want to give you a preview of that. We're going to show you planning and zoning the library, safe built, 
Middle Georgia Regional, how the demo has been done, and the open space, and then we're going to take a hard hat tour of the uh, amphitheater. So bring your tennis shoes, your jeans, whatever you want to wear. Uh, so we'll, we'll spend some time going to all those on that day. And then on the 16th of May, I'll be presenting, be presenting the budget to you. So between now and then, if you like to schedule a time, I'll be happy to meet with you individually. Uh, of course, the mayor's budget is generally presented at that time with some uh, ideas and suggestions, and then we'll talk about it afterwards for the, uh, for the final vote on that. So those are some just some items of importance. I have a couple of uh, people that have their hands raised. So we're going to move on to Commissioner Bronson. Yes, sir. Commissioner Bronson. Uh, just uh, uh, wanting to quick say, wanting to quick say, wanting to say quickly, uh, happy Teachers Appreciation Week to all the educators that are out there, and <coughs> especially to Commissioner Lucas for all you do. Uh, and then the second part too is, as you know, we have a open streets uh, event on House and Avenue coming up this Sunday. So encouraging all families to come out. It's a free event. Uh, we're focused on pedestrian safety, uh, the skates and bike rides and so forth. The mayor has agreed to skate with me as well, so I can't wait to see him on all four. And we'll see how that goes. That didn't sound right. So yeah, on four really? skates. <laughs> to my skaters, you know <laughs> what I mean. I apologize. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but we'll be having an event. Oh, yeah, scratch that. We'll be having an event uh, this Sunday, May 7th from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. This is being held by Open Streets Making from Linmore, uh, Linmore to Villa Chris Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Tillman. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, earlier, uh, Mr. Mayor and Commission, we passed a uh, resolution ordinance memorandum of understanding, per se, with the GBI. Um, there are many initiatives in this community to com combat crime and uh, uh, gang violence and so forth. And uh, one of those initiatives has been the Making Violence Prevention Initiative that has uh, uh, t been taking place for the last couple of years. And although the media a lot of times report and, and you see the negative story, there are a lot of success stories out there. So I just w hope that um, we're not giving somebody free reign to come in and counter what so many uh, citizen groups and the MVP initiative was set out to do, and that's to deter uh, gang violence and gun violence, and just give free reign that uh, the GBI could come in here and just set up camp and just uh, harass and arrest and lock and throw away the key on our citizens when uh, one of our initiative is trying to do the opposite. And so um, because the initiative was important for the entire community, then uh, we support it overall. But I think we have to continue to be mindful and vigilant that this is not free reign to continue what's been happening uh, a year and a half ago to set up shop downtown and continue to harass and stop citizens with what we call rolling uh, at lights that are now blanking after midnight. So. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor, uh, Chair, the public safety folks, and everybody. Uh, let's just hope that we're not opening up something that we're going to regret later. And that is a true partnership of working with the community and getting to know one another and helping us with those initiatives to combat and reduce and curb violence and gang violence as opposed to coming in here and setting up shop and just seeing free reign because uh, making Georgia uh, is the capital, per se, of all of middle Georgia, because this is where everybody comes to migrate and to try and enjoy themselves. And uh, I just want to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tillman. Any, anyone else on the personal privilege? Okay. If there's nothing further, there is a uh, flyer that should be at your seat for May the 12th, 2023 at 830. There's a Peace Officer Memorial Day uh, event there for those of you that can. We'll remind you about that next uh, Tuesday at our meeting. Uh, look out for the agenda coming out on Friday, and then uh, remember that we will have the field trip on next Tuesday. That's May the 9th. And no further business to bring it here today. This meeting is here by adjourn.